Do you remember a couple of weeks ago the Knoxville Marathon was going on about this time? And I don't know if you know about this, but the day before they had the kids run. Okay, the kids run starts at the zoo about a month before, and the kids all run a mile, and then in between that time and the marathon, they run all these other miles. And then the last mile is the Saturday before the marathon, and they start at World's Fair Park, and then they end in Neyland Stadium, and they get their picture on the big jumbotron, it's really cool. You get to go and walk and run in through Neyland Stadium. You can't beat that. So our family, we got to do it and everything, and it was all three kids, all three boys, and me and Jen, and we're out there, and, well, Jim is three, so he started up on my wife's shoulders, but then the boys, the older boys took off, so she, you know, I'm slower, so she took off after them, and I stayed behind with little Jim. Well, he was fine on the level part, but then as you go up the hill, kind of slowed down, I had to pick him up, put him on my shoulders, and then we start going down the hill. And it's a steep, steep hill. And so he wants to get down, so I put him down. And he runs and runs, and he's running as hard as he can. And he's smiling, and his feet are barely touching the pavement. (laughs) He's running so fast. And all around me, I see these other kids (laughs) face planting. (laughs) 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 And you can just see him going down all the way. He doesn't care. He's just <laughs> smiling, smiling, oblivious to it, oblivious to it. I keep telling him to slow down, but he doesn't listen to me. You see, he's smiling because he's ignorant. Not his fault. He's only three. <laughs> he has no concept of how close he is to having a major face plant. But there he is, running downhill, smiling, having fun, and yes, totally unaware. That's our lives. That's our lives. No matter what our age or where we are in our life, there are times when we are running downhill as fast as we can. Just like little Jim, all the while, one little misstep away from who knows what. And then I read this gospel about Jesus and Thomas, and I hear those words of Jesus, peace be with you, peace be with you. And I think, is peace really with us? I'm normally so preoccupied with things, some of them important, some of them not so important, that I really don't feel so peaceful most of the time. Maybe I'm missing that peace. I mean, we always hear this story and we think, oh, it's Doubting Thomas, Doubting Thomas. I think he gets a bad rap. I mean, that's just part of the story, okay? Notice in the story that Thomas isn't there when all the other disciples are gathered together when Jesus comes the first time. And when Jesus does show up, He says, peace be with you, and I always like to imagine there's like crickets. The the disciples don't say anything until he shows them his marks and his hands and his side. Then they say, oh, Jesus. So maybe this thing that happened, this resurrection, was a little too hard to understand and grasp for them too. So I don't think Thomas was really any different than the others. So that doubting Thomas thing, that doesn't really work for me. But what I do get is that because Thomas wasn't there, he missed the peace that Jesus was giving. This past week, one morning, we were all getting ready for the day for school and work and had the normal routine, wake up, wake up the boys, get the boys dressed, get them to brush their teeth, comb their hair, tie their shoes, get them breakfast, let the dogs out, feed the dogs, get myself ready, so on, busy, 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 right? Busy, busy, busy. And usually I'm just barking orders, not that they listen, but I feel like an air traffic controller with planes flying around, and they're just going wherever they want to go. Jen had already left to take Jim to school, and I'm standing there in the kitchen for a moment. And I notice Tom, our middle one, he has a guitar. He's strumming it. Okay, so we got him a guitar and drum set last Christmas because it's not loud enough at our house. (laughs) So he's got this guitar, and he's standing there by the refrigerator, and he's strumming it, and it doesn't sound good. It's out of tune, and he's not even strumming it in the right place. He's up here on the neck somewhere strumming it, but he's smiling. And he's got this real sweet smile while he's strumming it, like he's enjoying that sound that's coming out of the guitar. And for a moment, I wasn't looking at my phone, checking emails. I wasn't thinking about everything I need to get done. I was just there, present with my son. 
You see, I'd like to say that I have no control over how busy I am, that that's just the world I live in. And part of me really wants to believe that. Part of me does believe that. But part of me rejects that. Part of me rejects that strongly. Maybe because I want to have more control over my life. Maybe because I don't want to admit that I'm choosing to live my life this way. So this week, if you find yourself running down a hill, barely hanging on, don't be a doubting Thomas. Don't be a busy Thomas. Slow down. Say a prayer. Connect with someone. Maybe some priorities will need to be adjusted, but I really do believe that that can lead you to God's peace and even to new life. Happy Easter. Amen. Amen.